That one was for you, all you stargazers and cosmic lovers. This episode will be a little different. I'll give you some facts on a topic and at the end, decide what the answer should be. This time it comes down to opinion. This one has to do with protesters in Hawaii who are against a telescope being built on Mauna Kea. It made bigger headlines because Jason Momoa and Dwayne Johnson headed to Hawaii and took part in this protest. Aquaman star Jason Momoa on Wednesday visited native Hawaiian protesters blocking a construction of a $1.4 billion telescope project on Hawaii's tallest mountain. The same day, another Hawaiian Hollywood actor, Dwayne Johnson, defended the Mauna Kea protest during his appearance on The Tonight Show. Protesters have blocked the road to Mauna Kea summit for 17 days in an effort to halt construction on the 30-meter telescope, the TMT, project set to begin on land considered sacred to some native Hawaiians. And there's Jason saying, I'm so very honored to be here, to bring my children and all my ohana here. There's one thing that's not going to happen happen that telescopes not being built here. Mauna Kea Summit supposedly has the best conditions for astronomy in the Northern Hemisphere. The supporters of the TMT project believe the telescope will bring jobs to the area and further science research. Momoa told Hawaii News Now that protesters are not opposed to science, they're opposed to the desecration of sacred lands. Johnson said this mountain is their church. It would be like building on this church. This is so much bigger than a telescope being built. This is humanity. This is human beings who are hurting. However, look at this. Staff from existing telescopes on the summit, meanwhile, traveled up the mountain in seven vehicles to secure their facilities with approaching heavy winds. So, we know that there's already telescopes up there and observatories. There are a number of known burial sites on Mauna Kea, most of them in remote places, and the OMKM generally opposes making their locations known because of the extreme culture sensitivity and sanctity associated with Hawaiian burials. And I researched this and I could not find any proof that there are burial sites or any bodies found. And on top of that, no one knows where they are if there are any, so it's speculation. One of the members of OMKM said, You got to have that respect before you step on the land. You got to ask permission of all the spirits on the site. That sparked a discussion from some of the 15 members of the audience about what is culturally appropriate on the mountain. One protester said, If I feel an ahu, which is a shrine, needs to be made up there because I feel the mana, and the mountain is letting me do it, I will build an ahu. If the legendary snow goddess and her guardian told them to, it's okay with me. Mauna Kea is sacred to the native Hawaiians and has ties to creation. The upper region is for the realm of the creator, and the summit is a temple of the supreme being. It is home of the divine deities and divine ancestors, as well as the meeting place of Earth Mother and Sky Father. You know, I can't put my finger on it, but it sounds very similar to something I have heard before. You know, it's not coming to me, I just couldn't tell you. It's all the white man's fault! Cannot be used as an excuse this time. The telescope's backers includes the University of California, California Institute of Technology, India, China, Japan, and Canada. Astronomers say it would be able to study planets around other stars and peer into the black hole hearts of distant galaxies with a clarity exceeding that of the Hubble Space Telescope. Mauna Kea is Hawaii's tallest mountain and it has long been considered the best observatory site in the Northern Hemisphere. It's already home to large telescopes, but it's also a sacred place in Hawaiian culture and religion. The governor of Hawaii said that whatever the land boards decide, he supports the coexistence of astronomy and culture on Mauna Kea along with better management of the mountain. Keywords, better management of the mountain. In the description box, I added all the sources as usual, including some you can't get online without a password, so I turned them into PDFs and uploaded them as well, including a screenshot of one I couldn't turn into a PDF. This came from battlefields and burial grounds, and I use Native Americans as an example. As a nation, we were guilty of exercising a double standard, tolerating almost any treatment of Native American graves while assiduously guarding the sanctity of white burials. Throughout the history of this country, numerous amateur archaeologists, pot hunters, and other grave robbers have desecrated Indian burial grounds. What is sorely needed is a cooperative relationship between Native Americans who are concerned primarily with preserving the sacred integrity of burials and scholars who must systematically investigate archaeological sites before they are destroyed by construction. And most importantly, which I highlighted, such teamwork would ensure that endangered burials could be relocated to safer ground in an appropriate manner that would satisfy both 
traditionalists, and scientists. And a previous article I read concluded that the judge's recommendation included the condition that the telescope's workers and astronomers undergo mandatory cultural and natural resources training, meaning that the building of this telescope is not going to be insensitive to the needs and history of Hawaii. These are not the old days. The Hawaii governor signed an emergency proclamation threatening Mauna Kea protesters, or protectors, with police and National Guard. Over 2,000 turned out in response to the arrests and threats to pack the base of the mountain. Well, the governor then alleged illegal activity, but the media came back at him with no signs of drugs or alcohol, and no one was even allowed to smoke. However, that's not the problem. Reading further, the media reported that a great number of volunteers, seasoned organizers, were feeding thousands daily meals and snacks from free kitchens, running medical tents recycling cleaning porta potties and hauling trash so who's paying for all of this and does it mean these protesters don't work and if they don't work how are they making money is it welfare or is this special permission to take off work the mountain is a known place for summit tours adventurous snowboarders and of course the observatories, which wouldn't you know it, bring in money to the state of Hawaii. Now remember, the protesters say that they go to the mountain to practice their cultural beliefs, but how far up the mountain can one really go? Mauna Kea is one of the only places in the world where you can drive from sea level to 14,000 feet in about two hours. That's driving, not walking, driving. So altitude sickness is a high possibility. At 14,000 feet, there is 40% less oxygen than at sea level, so visitors should acclimatize to the altitude before proceeding further up the mountain. Anyone in poor health should consult their physician before planning to visit Mauna Kea. We do not recommend anyone who is pregnant to go further than the VIS. People under the age of 13 should not go any further because their bodies are still developing and they are affected more rapidly when going to a high altitude. The average round trip hiking time for experienced hikers is approximately 8 hours. Please know that your trip may take longer. Note that the weather can change without warning, including the onset of rain, ice, and or fog. Summer summit daytime temperatures average between freezing and 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Now, does that sound like a place that anyone would go to bury bodies, up a mountain to worship or build shrines? The base of the mountain, yes. But the top of the mountain, what do you think? And I added this to show you guys that rules were put in place to make sure tourists and people do not destroy anything or conduct themselves in a manner that is dishonorable to the natives of the island. I added this article clip from the Los Angeles Times in 2015 to confirm what the weather is like on the mountain. A snowstorm on Hawaii's 12,796 foot Mauna Kea has kept the summit inaccessible for more than a week. In accessible. The longest known period the area has been closed because of winter weather. Maybe I'm getting the wrong idea, but it sounds a little bit like a double standard. You can have tourism and money flowing in to some extent, but a telescope cannot be built in a place that already has observatories and telescopes. On top of a mountaintop that cannot be accessible by walking and requires healthy people with professional equipment. Here's a little history and update on Hawaii. Mainland Americans have been making their mark on Hawaii in ways both welcome and unwelcome. Since the early 1800s, when Protestant missionaries first landed there, they devised a Hawaiian alphabet, soon printed a speller, promoted monogamy, and introduced the spare-hardy architecture of New England whaling ports. While the U.S. annexed Hawaii as a territory in 1898 under somewhat shady circumstances and over the objection of many Hawaiians, by the 1950s, most Hawaiians were in favor of being admitted as as a state. When the state reached that milestone on this day, August 21st, in 1959, just seven months after Alaska joined the Union, Hawaii underwent immediate and radical change, largely in the form of unprecedented economic growth. Well, that sounds very nice. This jet fuel increase in tourism was not Hawaii's only area of growth. The state also saw a rapid expansion in light industry, companies producing everything, and diversification in agriculture. The flurry of commercial activity led to a corresponding boom in development. In 1964, construction spending was up nearly 20% from the previous year and included a 27 million high-rise on Waikiki Beach that was then the world's largest single-unit apartment building. But there's more. Additional projects included a $14 million business complex in downtown Honolulu, as well 
As freeway expansion and new planned communities, other signs that 1964 was a banner year for the Hawaiian economy by Times account, four new mattress factories have been opened and Schlitz is about to build a 100,000 barrels a year brewery near Pearl Harbor. Statehood was followed by an economic boom and Hawaii currently has a median household income of $68,020, the seventh highest in the nation. Statehood again strengthened the economy, bringing far more income from tourism and construction, but that was not the primary motivation for Hawaiians to vote for statehood, as the governor Linda Lingle at the time said on the 50th anniversary of Hawaii statehood, they voted for basic rights and privileges of American citizenship. They voted to have a voice in Washington. However, However, in a 2019 update, despite a low unemployment rate and a high state government surplus, Hawaii's economy was ranked among the worst in the nation in a new analysis. So it did take a turn for the worse. WalletHub named Hawaii's economy fourth worst in the nation. Among the reasons, slow GDP growth, low exports per capita, and relatively few high-tech jobs. Few high-tech jobs. In fact, when it comes to economic activity, Hawaii ranked dead last in the nation. Hawaii did a little better in economic health and innovation potential. The analysis comes as experts warn that Hawaii is on pace to hit rockier economic times as tourism dollars decline and the labor market cools. But to make you all feel better, Hawaii is not the worst place. It happens to be, wouldn't you know it, California. They're not equal. California is really not the best. Take a look at this chart for overall index, food and groceries, housing, utilities, transportation, health. Just in case there's at least one of you out there that wants to say that the white man ruined Hawaii. Who's ruining California then? Much of the conflict between the protesters and the scientists has arisen because the land is not privately owned. The Mauna Kea Science Reserve is held in trust by State of Hawaii and designed as a conservation land. Legally, state officials, not the Hawaiian people, have the right to determine the use of the land. Astronomy has been identified as a legal use for conservation land, and therefore the construction of the telescope is protected by the state. Opponents of the telescope argue that the project was wrongly granted a conservation district usage permit since it does not meet the criteria required to build in a conservation district. Supporters of the telescope address these concerns by illustrating the economic benefits of the project for the Hawaiian community. The project will invest $1 million per year in a fund to prepare Hawaiian students for jobs in science and technology industries. The construction of the telescope will create an estimated 300 jobs for Hawaiian workers. Once completed, the telescope will employ about 140 people and generate $26 million in observatory operations annually. So what do you guys think? To build or not to build? If you like this video, subscribe to my channel and check out my other videos. Make sure your notification bell is turned on so you can get updates for new videos and answers to your comments. Educate yourself!